Hello everyone and welcome back to another mini tutorial. Today I have something which is not really that crazy often run. Metal Gear MSX, the PS2 version, which is a port from the MSX version, has multiple categories and any percent basically has been browned out quite a lot in recent years. One of those runners was me. And there's another category for Metal Gear MSX that has not been run that often. That is 100%. Only a handful of people have actually run 100%. It's a very chill run. It takes 10 minutes more than any percent. And until today, so far, nobody skipped an item and rerouted it in later. 100% of course, means you need to get all the weapons, all the items, saving all hostages, beating all enemies, and of course, call all decoding frequencies. That's, that's how we define it. And there's one thing that we've done so far that we basically wanted to avoid later. We always wanted to pick up the flashlight to use it when we're actually underground between building one and building two in this round. Today, I'm going to teach you how to reroute this and how I go through the maze in the underground to save Ellen without a flashlight. So after we've been in the underground and after we met the fake Dr. Madna, we usually grab here the level six card, we use the level six card and go over to the um, fire trooper, do the boss right there. Then normally we go up to the first floor, grab the antenna, save a POW, grab the flashlight and go back into the underground. But if you feel basically confident about not needing the flashlight, you can use the flash and grab it later and we just do this without seeing where we're going. So, we just came in this room, we grabbed the level 6 cards, now we're actually going to return back. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go actually here, go to the gas mask, and now we continue basically. We never left the underground, this is our first building to underground visit. And we're going to just move over here all the way to the left. Follow the path as usual. So we'll go here until this point, I place my bomb here. I need to align myself like this so I can actually move past the next pit. Because this will open up if I enter too high. And then we basically are aligned with this set of boxes. And this is important. This door remembers where on the X axis we are uh, aligned. So from here on, I go just to the level six card. I enter. I go to the level one card. And now without the flashlight, it is just dark. So how the hell do we align ourselves and set everything up? It is actually simpler than you think. You just got to be a little bit you know, tight with your timing. There are still visual cues. Uh, one that I opted to not use is actually the animation of Snake walking left and right. Like you can see here, he's walking. He doesn't make any stepping sounds, so you can just uh, count the steps like we do in Medical Solids out of bounds speed ones, for example. But what we can do for sure is we can align snake with the HUD. There are certain things in the HUD that I use to align myself to find my way here to not fall into any of the pits and not die and do this without needing the flashlight. So as I come here, basically I start being aligned with the boxes. I just come down to the right and already I align myself with the vertical axis to be on the line with the left side of the weapon box. So you see the weapon box right now with the plastic explosives. With that, basically on the left side I align myself and if I go just right a little bit, go down and basically you are in the center of the screen. I can just hold left here because I'm already moving around the box. I'm going to edit in later how this room normally looks like so you can see how this looks basically if you can see. Then we move all the way to the left and on the left you see of course the life and class text. There the L is basically your most left alignment that you have. So once you move all the way to the left and say you're vertically aligned with the L, you can move down. And that's the first room done. Quite simple already. The next room, we got to move from the top left basically to the bottom right. And there's two big pits here. One of them is actually that we need to walk all the way south until we see Snake fully. As soon as I see Snake fully, I can already start moving left. I'll just a little bit further. There you go. So I come from here. I can fully see it. Now I turn right. How far do I turn right? Until I'm on the right half of my health bar. I can just walk down here. There's a pit to the left. If I were to go left, it would open. I would die. But if I walk right, as soon as I see Snake fully, I move all the way to the right until I'm basically here on the alignment of the health bar. And once again, we're going to use this left side corner, the border of the weapon box to know when to turn down because we're going to walk all the way down. And there's a pit basically in the middle. We cannot really avoid it. It will open and we have to move quickly around. And this was one of the bigger headaches here. So what I will do now is I will all go all the way to the right until I see the starting point of the left weapon box. And I keep holding down. 
because in the next room there will be two more pits opening up but uh, as they open up you can just move past them and you will basically avoid them altogether on this yeah fourth screen there's another thing there we need to walk basically around a little box so we need to just hold right for like one double step so we are basically on the level of the plastic explosives here in this case down two steps roughly I, I just time it by feeling because I've been running this game for so often and then immediately I turn back to the left to align myself once again just like I'm aligned here right now and just keep walking down and you will hear actually that you will open two more pits but as they open up you can still walk past them even if you are technically to be hit later from them and this alignment basically with the grenade uh, with the plastic explosives is what we need anyway also for going back up again now we're here at the final last room and this room gave me some more headache but it's technically also quite simple we are already walking against the box and there's like two big boxes where we need to move down in the middle and what i do is i go left and down here as you can see okay i'm in between those two i hold right for a moment to know that i'm all the way to the right and i walk down now as far as i hear the pit opening up and this is key this is where we need to be fast and reactive but I walk down, I hear the pit opening up, I walk all the way to the right to be right over the plastic explosives, and then I keep walking down. So here we go. I screwed up, it's great. If you screw up like me, for example, you can still save time by just quickly going up again. If you leave the room and come back, a line here, the pits are closed again. So even if you can't see them, you can retry. It's still faster rather than taking a death and trying all the way from the beginning again, because you will be transported all the way to the beginning of the maze. So let's try again. There we go. And you can also hear that the door is already opened up. So I can just walk out like this. After that, we do the usual thing where we go and save Ellen. I'll go back to the level one card and it is absolutely mandatory that you go through this door as far left as possible because when you enter and if you take like one step forward and if you just a little bit to the right or just closer to the center of the door and not all the way to the left both pits will open and you cannot advance what we need to do is we be either on the right or on the left i choose to be on the left so the left pit opens first i walk up until i hit the box which i can't see and then i quickly walk right up and left to avoid the right pit here that's close to the door So after I'm here at the top, I can relax. It's all good. I will actually align myself again here uh, on the x-axis. So I hit from a vertical axis the gap between the border and the plastic explosives. We'll walk all the way up. You will only hear one gap opening. That's the bottom one of the two pits in this room. And now we need to walk again once right up and left. That's all we need. We need to go around the corner and you can align yourself basically all I do is I look how far do I need to go right until I hit the right side of the plastic explosives. I go up and after like two steps, I go back to the left. You can technically just go up to uh, switch the screen and then go back down. But you want to align yourself before you move up all the way. So on this instance, once again, I'm going to align myself just like we did when we walked um, down. I want to align myself here with this gap between the board and the plastic explosives and just keep walking up. And it's super important that after you hear the two pits open and you enter the next screen, you keep walking up. You cannot pass. You keep walking up and then you either see that you stop moving, you're going to turn left, or you're going to get used to counting the steps in order to move left. Because the pit will open on this second screen from top um, where you are standing. And if you keep walking up, sadly, you cannot stop there. You're not safe. The pit will open up and where you stand at the box, it will also catch you. So you need to walk up and then start moving left almost immediately as soon as you know you're around the corner, which is basically like one snake's length away. <laughs> this is where definitely practicing first we've been able to see is worth it. If you ever want to run this 100% blind, but this is what I've been doing for two years now, so I'm a little bit more familiar with the game. And after that, basically just as we got down here, I go to the middle of the health bar all the way up until I can't. I walk all the way to the left until I align with the L. I go to the middle of this room roughly. I walk all the way to the right. Once again, so I'm aligned with the plastic explosives. I go up. And then basically I just go back to where my health bar starts, like in the middle. And that's how you can do it. This is how you can do the maze completely without the flashlight. And why this is a little bit scary, I guess. It's also important because 
this whole thing had me save so much time that I got free world records. Not free, but I could technically get free because right now I'm running this on GOG, PC, <laughs> on HTC, NTSC, and of course the PS2 Power. But I also got them for free because this is a huge time save. In Power, I save 55 seconds. I would assume roughly 50 seconds is just from rerouting stuff when to pick up things. And in NTSC, it's almost like one and a half minutes. It's a huge chunk of time that we save. Just really good for 100% as rerouting. It makes the run a lot more harder, but if you really want to go for it and if you want to, well, beat the new world records that I just made today, you got to learn how to do this. And I hope with this video, you have enough to get started on it again. Maybe you want to practice first with my explanations when you can't see. So in the old 100% tutorials on my channel, you can find the old route where we grab the flashlight first and then come down here where we can see. Of course, that's way, way easier. And then once you're comfortable with it, try the new route out that you can see in the link videos down below and then uh, see if you can do it also blind. But yeah, that's been it from my side. Thank you everyone for watching. And of course, hope you have lots of fun, a great day, and I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.